Hello everyone. Today we're going to be looking at my top 5 Azure tips that I want to show off to you today. Let's get on with it. In at number 1, we have the Windows Admin Center. Now the Windows Admin Center is a great resource. We can deploy, first of all, our virtual machines and we can layer it on top of that. So I'm going to spin up a quick virtual machine here in Azure. And we're going to drop that into a brand new resource group. We're just going to make a new one here called temp to drop this in. Drop in a quick virtual machine name here of Azure Tips. Change the region to UK South. The only reason I'm using UK South is because it's the one that I always use. And we'll change that image from Ubuntu to a Windows Server 2022 image. Basic username and password here. Just a mic admin and a default password for me to use. Nothing particularly special. And I'm going to tell Microsoft I already have a Windows Server license to save some cash here. Using all the defaults in the disks and the networking and the management, disabling boot diagnostics because we don't need it for this demo, and we'll just go and review and create that virtual machine and wait for it to deploy. So that virtual machine is deployed, we can jump in here, jump straight into our Azure Tips virtual machine, and we can click on Windows Admin Center. Windows Admin Center requires an agent to actually install, so we're going to whack this install button over here, and it's going to force push that agent directly into that virtual machine. We don't need to do anything special here, but we're just going to open these ports uh, directly to the internet over the public IP address. Remember, this is a demo, and this is only for testing purposes only. Normally, you'd access this over the internal IP addressing. Once that's completed, you have to be a member of the Windows Admin Center admin logon role to connect. Even if you are a global admin, you still need to go into the role assignments for this specific role and add yourself into it. So I'm going to drop here into my existing admin account and I'm going to add that admin account into the role of Windows Admin Center logon. Once you've completed this, it might take a few minutes for this to actually take effect. Just like a lot of things in Azure, how long is a piece of string? It could take a few minute, few seconds. It could take five minutes to actually add. So we're just going to select this here, Windows Admin Center Logon Role, go to Members, Add Members, and add my existing account that I'm currently logged in with. Once that's all completed, we can check to see that Windows Admin Center Administrator Logon is there and available for me. And I can drop back to Windows Admin Center and connect directly to the Windows Admin Center either over the private or the public IP address. Once we're connected into the Windows Admin Center, we can do lots of things inside here, such as changing around the firewall, browsing the file system, adding or removing features. Uh, we can do a lot of the things you used to be able to do through system through the server manager, uh, but now we can do it all through this web interface. We could even make remote PowerShell connections, or my favorite feature here within Windows Admin Center is if we scroll down and have a look at Remote Desktop, where we can actually come into Remote Desktop and log directly in over RDP to our Windows Server machines through the browser without any extra configuration. And as you can see, that has logged us straight in via RDP over Windows Admin Center via the Microsoft Azure portal. And remember, this means that this RDP connection has now had to pass through all of the Azure AD authentication features. So if you've got conditional access layered on here, if you've got multi-factor layered on here, essentially you've just layered on multi-factor and conditional access in front of a remote access solution on Azure. Move on to Azure tip number two. 
the Cloud Shell is Linux. Up here we can launch our Azure Cloud Shell and we can gain access to this either via PowerShell or via Bash, depending on what flavor you'd like. If we pop this into a full screen window so we can take a little bit of an extra look at this, once our Cloud Shell is up and running, sometimes this takes a couple of seconds to boot. It is actually a container server that's running underneath. We can go and run a couple of commands in here to demonstrate the power of the Cloud Shell. If we run PS version table, you'll be able to see the operating system is Linux. And it's running on Ubuntu. But if we run Git module, we have preloaded in here a bunch of modules. AZ accounts, AZ compute, AZ network. But if we go list available, these are all of the modules that are currently available on this Cloud Shell. These are just the AZ ones. All of your Azure Cloud Shell modules are loaded all of your Azure PowerShell modules are loaded. If we have a look at do ls and we'll do a quick touch, we can create um, simple files here like temp file.txt. It is full Linux. And if we're going to edit a text file here, we can use vi to go and edit this temp file.txt. And within this temp file.txt, we can use vi to go and add in some text. This is all wonderful because this is full Linux running inside our container systems and we can hit control, um, colon WQ exclamation mark to right quit that, catalanate it with cat and see hello this is a temp file. Now if we want to run larger files like for example our YAML files we can still do that with Vi if we want to but this is a little bit unwieldy. Um, trying to use Vi for very large files requires a lot of expertise and a lot of practice. But we've got a better solution for that. We can just type code. And if we type code here to end this Azure vote.yaml file, what you will actually have is a version of VS Code spun up inside the Cloud Shell. Now you can use your mouse to point and click and edit this, or we can click the ellipses up here, which are currently bugged out. But if we click in this area, it will actually pop up and we can save or exit our code editor from there. If we do a clear screen, we can see some of the other features that we could do inside here. For example, there is Git fully running in here, Docker fully running in here, uh, Kubernetes, so the kubectl command is actually running in here, and also other things like Terraform are running in here. In fact, there's a whole number of different applications that are preloaded into this Cloud Shell. If we go and have a look at the user sbin, you'll notice there is quite a lot of signed binaries that actually exist inside here. All your regular Linux stuff that you might need. And we can also go and look at CD user bin and see a lot of the other applications that Microsoft have actually loaded in here as well for us to use. Many, many different things, including things like Python and the pip package manager is loaded in here as well. And remember, this is all because this is running on Ubuntu Linux underneath. Azure tip number three. Cloud Shell in VS Code. Cloud Shell can be accessed by other locations as well. If we look at VS Code and we have a look at the Azure Tools extension here and install the Azure Tools extension into our VS Code environment and wait for this to install, it will come with a number of options. One of those options that we can actually see is that we can run the Azure Cloud Shell directly within VS Code and use that Cloud Shell without ever having to go to the browser itself. Once the Azure Tools extension is loaded into VS Code, we can go and sign directly into our Azure account. And if I sign and pick an account here, we're now signed in and can close this page. We will be able to see inside VS Code, we have the ability to check out all of our Azure resources underneath our subscription here without having to go to the browser. We can also do things like deploy static web apps and function apps directly from within VS Code. But if we go and look for uh, the Azure Cloud Shell, we can choose to sign in. We have to sign in again for the Azure Cloud Shell. And once that sign in process is complete, we can pop over here back into VS Code and back into the terminal. Notice in new terminal, this will start with PowerShell. But if I change this from PowerShell on the right hand side there, uh, and switch this to a different terminal, we can switch this directly to the Azure Cloud Shell. And this will request an Azure Cloud Shell 
from Azure and run it directly here within VS Code. So we never actually need to leave VS Code to type commands and execute the things that we have available to us in Azure. And you'll see the same files and the same repositories that I already had in my Cloud Shell through the browser itself. Azure tip number four. Free services. Don't forget, in Azure, there is a number of services that are available to us free. And to see those very quickly, we can drop into all services and you'll find an option that says free services right here. By clicking on the service, you'll be able to see all of the available services that are available to you for free for 12 months. And there is also a number of services in Azure that are free forever. So some of the ones that are free for 12 months, you get things like a virtual machine and some storage accounts, but free forever, we get things like Azure Data Factory databases, some automation accounts, and we also get access to things like the Face APIs, Azure Cloud Shell and Cosmos DB. Free forever for you to use. My personal favorite down here though is static web applications, and this allows us to build a website completely for free with an SSL certificate attached to it. And we can see here from the compare plans, we've even got 100 gigs worth of bandwidth included per subscription with a max app side of 250 meg. Azure tip number five manage other clouds with Azure. It's not just Azure that Azure manages. If we go and have a look in here into Microsoft Defender for Cloud, you'll notice that not only do I have my Azure subscription hooked in here, I also have my AWS subscription hooked in here as well. And Azure is looking at my AWS subscription to see if there are any security instances that might need to be changed uh, within my AWS certs and give me recommendations for how I would go about configuring that. So for example, down here, we can see that I need to manage access and permissions and a root account access key shouldn't exist. If we click on that one, Azure will even tell us exactly how to remediate this high severity security issue within an Amazon Web Services account. You'll also be able to see now that Microsoft have very recently included DevOps security, where we also have the ability to have our GitHub environments, or sorry, our GitHub repositories scanned and our DevOps connector scanned here. I hope you enjoyed those top five tips from Azure and you know the routine, hashtag like and subscribe and I hope you enjoyed this video and will join me next time. Goodbye.